Hello, welcome to another video from Gus Tech. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Sennheiser Game One headset. We're going to be going into a little bit more analysis on some of the good, the bad, and the ugly on this headset and see if it's worth your buy. This is Sennheiser's premium gaming headset, the Game One headset. Now this does come in two variations, both open back, which the Game One is, and a closed back, which the Game Zero is. Keep in mind, we're only going to be reviewing the Game 1 headset, and in our estimation, an open back headset is really what you would prefer in most instances. Obviously, the open back headsets are going to give you a better audio quality, an overall more open sound and broad feeling to the sound that you're receiving. It's also going to be nice because it's going to keep your head a little bit cooler than a closed back system will. Now, again, we don't really recommend a closed back headset unless you need the noise canceling it provides, both for yourself and for others as open backs will leak a little bit of the sound. The Game One only weighs 300 grams, which is really nice because it feels nice and light. It doesn't weigh down on your head and it doesn't become uncomfortable for long periods of gaming, which is obviously a huge benefit if you're gonna be sitting at your computer or your Xbox or PlayStation for more than a couple hours. I don't really love the velvet finish that you can see on these headsets. Uh, Honestly, I kind of wish that they would have made it a little bit softer or maybe a little bit smoother on the actual velvet itself. It kind of starts to rub against your skin if you have dry skin like I do, and it kind of becomes more of an irritant than it is a benefit. So if Sennheiser's listening, I would prefer either putting leather cups on these or making the velvet a lot smoother and softer. The volume dial is on the side cup, as you can see here. And obviously, if you just rotate it clockwise, it'll go all the way to the maximum volume and counterclockwise to go to the minimum volume. Now, this is preference. Obviously, some people prefer it to be in line with the cord. I don't prefer that because I don't ever want to touch my volume settings on my headset. I just use my computer. So really, honestly, it's more of an annoyance when I'm sitting there and I move and it changes the volume on the inline cable. I prefer it on the headset because I'm never touching this side of my headset. The other nice thing they added to the Game 1 and the Game 0 combined is the microphone boom. The microphone boom is really nice because it actually will mute your, uh, your microphone just by raising it up to the upright position. It's obviously a huge benefit because you don't have to go searching for a mute switch on your cable. Again, this is a preference thing, but I really do prefer it this way as I can have the headset on and when I need it to mute because my dog's barking or I'm getting yelled at for something I didn't do like the dishes, uh, all I have to do is just flick it up and nobody can hear that I'm getting yelled at by my wife. The cable length is another huge benefit of this headset. It is nine and a half feet or uh, three meters, but we don't use uh, European measurements here. So <clears throat> it's a very long cable. That's gonna give you the benefit of if you need to plug it into the back of your computer, even if your computer's on the ground or if it's in a weirdly accessible position, you can usually still get the full distance that you need. It also has the Velcro strap that you saw there and that Velcro strap will help you to compress the cable a little bit if you're using it on a controller or something from your PlayStation or your Xbox. Again, keep in mind, this headset is compatible with both the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, although it will require separate adapters for both of those to work. These only have 50 ohms, which is a very low impedance. That's a nice thing because you won't really need to add an amplifier or do anything with a digital side of it to increase your sound. Now, you may want an amplifier, but I typically recommend to individuals getting this headset specifically that, at least initially, try it out, see how the soundstage works, see how the volume works, and see if you prefer it without the amplifier so you don't have to spend the extra $50 or $100 or whatever you're going to be buying. The frequency response on these is excellent. 15 hertz on the low end, 28,000 hertz on the high end. So you're going to pick up all of the tingy highs and some of the lowest basses that you're going to hear in your games, in your music, or in the movies that you may be watching with this headset. Similarly, the microphone has an excellent range of 50 hertz on the low end up to 16,000 hertz on the high end. So people are gonna be able to pick up any voice inflection you typically want to throw into your microphone. Now, again, this is a good overall range and it's not something you typically find on a gaming headset. The microphone also has a very nice noise canceling feature. So the front of the microphone is actually going to pick up different sounds that are not coming directly from your mouth, and it's going to filter those sounds and prevent them from coming through to the, you know, whatever program you're using, Skype, TeamSpeak, whatever it is, so that people that are listening to you don't have to deal with a bunch of background noise. 
We found that it works really, really well, especially when you have a clackety mechanical keyboard like we do. And when you're sitting there typing to people or talking to people when you're typing, a lot of times that clackiness comes through on traditional gaming headsets, but it doesn't come through on this, which again is another nod to Sennheiser's really excellent engineering in the sound department. In our experience, this headset has done really exceptionally well. Typically, from what I found anyway, the volume goes high enough and really a little bit higher than I would need it to go just using my onboard sound card on my on my computer. So I don't think that you need an amp. Some people may prefer to have an amp so it can get a little bit louder. They can have a little bit more control over their sound stage, things like that. But again, I really recommend that you don't purchase an amp until you try a stock first because the stock experience really is exceptional on these. The sound stage is really what blew me away with this headset. The first thing I did when I got these is I went and plugged into my computer. I played some Muse and I played some Daft Punk to get myself a nice broad range of different sounds and pick up and see how the soundstage actually worked with music. It was excellent. I'm not kidding when I say that it was like I was hearing some of these songs for the first time ever. It had amazing clarity. I could hear sounds that I couldn't get even from my Bose headphones, from our Audio-Technica headphones. The soundstage is really incredible for listening to music. It's nice, even, and kind of flat, which is really preferred when you're playing video games and things like that. But even for listening to music, if you want to pick up those technical sounds, you can hear them really, really well with this headset. The next thing I did is I loaded up Battlefield 4, I loaded up Hitman. These are games that have a really excellent soundstage already. They have really nice crisp sounds, they have really good def defined and clear audio quality. So using a headset like this, it really brought that audio quality to life. Uh, playing Battlefield, it felt like you're in the middle of a battle, in the middle of a war. And it really was great because you could hear some clarity in the explosions and the gunshots that, again, you're not going to find in a typical gaming headset. And you're not going to find in most speaker systems. The noise canceling in the microphone deserves to be mentioned again because it really is exceptional. I have yet to find a microphone built into a gaming headset that works better than this microphone that Sennheiser has put out on this headset. We're actually going to show you guys a comparison between this microphone and its noise canceling attributes to the SteelSeries Sy Siberia V2 headset, which is a more mid-level gaming headset. And you're going to see that there's a stark contrast in the audio quality in the microphone, not only from the sound that's coming in directly, but also blocking out that extra f and filtering out that extra crap noise. This is the SteelSeries Siberia V2 headset. We are comparing the microphones on the Siberia V2 from SteelSeries, the USB edition, and the Sennheiser Game One headset. Both of the tests have the same background audio track and the microphones are equidistant from the face. This is the Sennheiser Game One headset. We are comparing the microphones on the Siberia V2 from SteelSeries USB edition and the Sennheiser Game One headset. Both of the tests have the same background audio track and the microphones are equidistant from the face. So here's the question. Is this the best gaming headset that your money can buy? Obviously at $200, this is pretty expensive. In our estimation, based on all the things that we've run through, and again, I'm no audiophile, but I believe that my ears don't suck. I think this is the best gaming headset you can buy for the money. And it may even make a run for the best gaming headset you can buy even when money isn't a consideration. Uh, to be completely honest, the features that Sennheiser has brought to the table with this, the excellent soundstage, the noise canceling microphone, the muting microphone boom when you raise it up, the overall quality and feel of the headset. Uh, again, it feels very durable and nice in your hands. When you combine all of that together, I really can't think of a better gaming headset out there at the moment. The way that this is going to clarify and bring crispness and quality to the overall feeling of your game, your movies, your music, whatever it is that you're doing and listening to, I don't think that anything out there is better than this right now. And that's just my opinion, but again, I think it's definitely worth your consideration. The real question is, is this better than any headset that you can possibly even make? using 
a nice pair of headphones, and throwing on an additional microphone adapter. To answer that question, we're going to be making another video highlighting how you can make your own gaming headset using a quality pair of headphones and a separate mic attachment. And you're gonna be able to see whether or not that is actually better than a total package gaming headset like what Sennheiser is offering. Thanks again for joining us for our review of the Sennheiser Game 1 headset. Again, that's Game with a 4, replacing the A. It's really leet to say it like that. Anyway, we've actually had a lot of fun reviewing this product. Again, we wholeheartedly recommend it if you're looking to get a really nice gaming headset. Uh, if you check the link right here, this is our unboxing video that you can see a little bit more information on the packaging, on some of the first impressions when you actually pull the headset out and get an idea on whether or not it's something that you actually wanna purchase. If you are interested in buying this headset, there is a link for this headset in the description below. Uh, if you do click that link and you purchase it from Amazon, that goes directly towards supporting us, helping us to make additional videos like these. And even if you're not purchasing this headset and you're just wanting to buy whatever it is from Amazon, if you follow that affiliate link and buy whatever it is from there, it directly supports our channel and we really appreciate you doing that. Like the video if you liked it, comment if you have any questions, you have any suggestions for future videos, or you just wanna be heard. If you did like the video, click subscribe, check back for more tech-related videos on different monitors, uh, computers, different graphic cards, headsets, mice, keyboards, peripherals, whatever you can think of tech-related, we're probably going to be reviewing it in the future. And if you have any suggestions for things that you'd like us to do in the future, again, leave a comment below and let us know. Thanks again for watching. We are Gus Tech. We'll see you next time.